back outside. You marched into Valhalla without even talking to us first? Nice to see you too, milady. It was a personal matter, and I would not take you from your duties. You breached Valhalla. Consider it worth my time. This entrance is secret. Who told you of this place? Nailed to our door three days ago. Kratos of Sparta, you are hereby invited to a challenge. Face the past, face the future. Master Valhalla, master thyself. And then directions here, no signature. Who else knows of this entrance? Odin and us. It's likely a trap. You're thinking of going back in. Would you join me? Oh, don't let me intrude on your personal matter. Besides, I can't. Unlike the two of you, I've never died. What happens if I return inside? Well, that depends on you. Valhalla draws from the memories of those who enter. In there, you're an open book. Sure, you want to go back in. Hmm. How did you even get past the gate? I forced it open. With his bare hands. <sighs> he forced it open. There's an easier way if you insist on going back in. Come. Sigrun, maybe later we could continue with that one conversation then? For once, Mimir. I think you've said enough. Ah, uh, right then. And the other matter we discussed? You're still... thinking, I take it? I am. Is that what this is? Guess I'll let you think, then. you to perform the ritual of selection. Good. Now, let my sister speak to you of Valhalla's rules and its values. What do you know of this place? Valhalla seeks to foster wholeness and balance within those who enter. To fully master yourself, you can't rely on only your most familiar tactics. I use the tactics appropriate to the situation. Of course. But varying your approach will demonstrate to Valhalla the full mastery of your abilities. And Valhalla will reward such demonstrations. Be sure to come back and see me as you progress. What have you to say? The challenge of Valhalla is not merely about overcoming obstacles. It's about the way you overcome them. How you demonstrate mastery of your own powers. We can guide you down a path, but Valhalla will be the judge of your progress. Return to me when you've met a goal. And we will. I am ready. Air, Gunnar, with me. this cage. It's not funny anymore. I can't believe you mean to roast me on a whim on a presumption that it's what Valhalla wants from you. Have you ever considered that maybe your instincts are just random thoughts that pop into your head, no more likely to be true than the next? Hmm? Maybe consider that. Quickly. going to incinerate me and see what happens? I swear, you haven't changed one solitary... Brother? What 
What am I doing in here? Over here. Over here. What's that? No. No! Get me out of here! What is this? Help me! I'm trying! Do not panic. We will simply return to the gate. I don't think so. I think you've broken how Valhalla works. Oh! I think this is it, brother. Let's get you out of here! Sigrun! Bob, you're burning! I'm not supposed to be here! Oh, Kari! Shaito! Look at you. You shouldn't have done that. Oh, heal, dummy. You and Kratos would not. But you're safe now. Secret, I'm sorry. I've been so foolish. I... Later, love. <laughs> I need a moment. As I will be forever in yours. <clears throat> My lady! Stop. You've seen me worse. I'm not sure about that, boss. Hush. It's nothing air can't heal. <coughs> this could take some time. Go on, Kratos. Get back in there. And do what you need to do. Shh. Memory of Vanaheim now. Brother, I beg you not to remember the exploding plants. What did you say about a forest? You remember being elsewhere when Helios took your place? Aye. Yes, I didn't mention that while we were plummeting, but yes, I was in the forest, much like that of my youth. Back on my old body, too. It was a bit dreamlike, to be honest. Do you wish to return there? I can't say I don't. I'm concerned, but I'm more than curious. I guess my memories are fair game in here as well. Don't suppose they'll just stick to the pleasant ones, will they? Unlikely. Why don't we talk about that image of you in the shrine we keep seeing? If Valhalla keeps pulling it out of your head, it must have some significance to you. Could it be that the idea of being loved and respected is a fair might better than the alternative? Now hear me out, and it's not as though I'm the smartest man alive or anything, but don't you think joining Freya's council could put you in a position to walk that path? Learn that path. That would be a poor reason to accept. Ambition is poison. Oh, I see now. We must keep the primordial realms up here on the top shelf. <laughs> Getting back to that image of you on the shrine. I'll grant you ambition can be a poisonous motive, but your ambitions are only to help people, not for your own glory, right? Make the world a better, safer place. I think maybe that image of you is symbolic of your desire to walk a righteous path. Valhalla's little signpost. You are sure accepting Freya's offer is the right thing for me? Or for the realms? I think we are here to make sure about that. One way or the other. Oh! Here's a random thought for you. Maybe it only counts as a sacrifice if you give up someone you value. I think we all know that's not me. Why is he 
I would have signed it, but it was important you come here for your own reasons. Then you're not an illusion. You're in the flesh, old friend. What do you want? I know what you're wrestling with, Spartan. I understand it better than you realize. The shame. The doubt. The question I could find no answer for until I came here. Lifetimes ago. Stepped through that door. What is in there? Oh. I'm not here to spoil that for you. Only to help you prepare. Why? Because I can. Because for us, fighting occupies the body while our minds work out the rest. Because you're not ready. Yet. Well done, Kratos. I yield. Good then. Perhaps you are ready now. Am I? Honestly, nobody can truly say that but you. Your journey. We have uncovered our host. It is Tyr. Tyr, you say? Aye, and no projection either. I never knew his connection to Valhalla was so strong. But then he goes back further than I do. Fascinating. You sent the invitation in the first place? Yes. His voice echoes in the halls. There's no mistaking it. 
So it's Tyr's game you're playing? This is all his idea? A game is not his purpose. There is something here I must see through. And what is that exactly? A process. <sighs> all right. If it's helping, I trust you both. We all do. As we trust in Valhalla. Even after what it did to you? I knew the rules and chose to break them. I regret nothing. It seems like you're making progress, whatever you're doing in there. Perhaps. Listen, I... know I made you feel like we expected more of you than you could give. And I just want you to know, I'm not asking you to change how you are or who you are. We had to break the old world to build a new one. Picking up the pieces and putting them together stronger, it's a rare opportunity. You made a difference here. In some circles, a symbol of change. On many days, just knowing that you're a part of the Council is enough. And other days? You've earned a voice. How you use it is up to you. Well done, General. I had no doubt you would see this through to the end. Congratulations. I hope Paul Holler gave you everything. Look who's needed. returning from the front gate for once. Something must have happened in there. I take it this is a good sign. Freya, I will join you. I will try to be what the people need. Good. I'm very pleased to hear that. And that you found what you needed here. I could not have done so without my friends. I am grateful. Valhalla is at your disposal, Kratos. If you have more you wish to work out, now or later, we will heed the call. Did Valhalla return you to your force last time? Aye, brother. And this time I wasn't alone. Were you attacked? No. Far from it. Apparently my Valhalla isn't the stuff of constant combat at all. The memories of mine it draws on are more interpersonal. To wit, I found myself reliving old times with my former crew of fairy folk. Cobweb, mustard seed, the whole pack in there do well. Such warm greetings for their old ringleader, like nearly a day had passed. Sounds... pleasant. Rather was, to be honest. I remain suspicious, but if this process is doing something for you, I remain open to seeing what it has in mind for me. The more that Valhalla makes me revisit my misadventures with Oberon, the more like a dream it all seems. Which is ironic. Back then in my youth, I could hardly bear to sleep. Then, the time I came to value a proper night's rest. In captivity, it was nearly the only escape I knew. And then the need to sleep went away completely. And I don't miss the time lost. Damn it, brother. I do miss dreaming. The mind comes to terms with itself in ways only possible with your waking judgment out of the way. Our hidden desires, our anxieties. Like a bifrost window to what's going on in your soul. And Valhalla does the same. Aye. And I don't think I realized how much I needed it.
Before you ask, yes, I was back in the old forest again. And this time I encountered my former boss, King Oberon. Rather eye-opening, actually. I used to be a true believer for him. Would have done anything he asked. But now I see through all that charisma and feigned wisdom down to the small hypocritical tyrant I know him to be. Wait till I tell you what he put me up to regarding a particular magical flower. As I was saying about my old master and his lofty, so-called romantic ideals, we'd settled in a forest outside of Athens, a place well situated to observing the comings and goings of the Duke's other guests. There we observe the romantic complications of some local use, and Oberon gets it into his head to intervene, bids me fetch him a magical flower that can manipulate the affections of others. Supposedly, the idea was to nobly help true love prevail over the pressure of family arrangements. But what he really wanted was to use the flower to torment his own wife. I see why you left his service. Aye. Brother, while I'd love to say I left Oberon's service as a matter of principle, the truth is it was much more a question of pride. If he'd simply shown me more appreciation, who knows how long I might have tolerated his evils. I certainly tolerated plenty from my subsequent employers before I could take no more. If I'm being honest, I was only too happy to offer my complicity in Queen Titania's humiliation. What did you do? I caused her to fall in love with something preposterous. An actor. Master. He had you make his wife fall in love with another. Aye, temporarily, by use of this magic flower. Though now it's clear to me the flower's effect isn't love exactly, but a kind of obsessive devotion that is too often mistaken for love. So, of course, the Queen made a fool of herself, as did all those under the flower's spell that night. Don't know how I ever got embroiled in such a farce. You are wiser now. I think so. Though that only makes up for so much past stupidity. Do you yet wish to speak about Sigrun? She was eager to receive you mere days ago. What has changed? Oh, don't pretend to be interested in my romantic life, brother. I am interested. And you are evading the question. What happened? Well... After you dropped me off at a longhouse the other night, Sigrun made a cowberry and hazelnut pudding. But I don't eat anymore, so slightly awkward, but a lovely thought. And? Pretty much it, really. Hmm. There is more to this. What else happened that night between you and Sigrun? Well, we stayed up much too late. I told her stories, she told me secrets. She put spirits to my lips, even though I can't get drunk. Then she invited me to watch her fall asleep. Hmm. And the next morning? The next morning we took a boat along the Lake of Nine. It was divine, brother. The lake was sun-dappled, the air was crisp and perfect. You could smell the thaw. When did you misspeak? You know me too well, brother. We were on the lake when I put my metaphorical foot in it. Hmm. Well, tell me, what happened between you and Sigrun on the lake? Well, she was rowing past where you found her family treasury. Where we learned she cursed her brother over forbidden love. That's right. And as we rowed by, I remember feeling grateful that the place was now deep underwater where she couldn't see it. And at that moment, she turned to me and she said, I think, Mimir, I might be smitten with you. I think maybe I want to kiss you. Hmm. Mm, indeed, brother. I mean... There's always been more to us than there's been the opportunity to explore. So much unspoken beneath the surface. I had to name it so boldly. It took me a bit off guard. You and Sigrun, I am still waiting for the part where you spoke. In my defense, I only told her the truth as it struck me in the moment. 
I told her my feelings for her were deep as Rams Hall and had been for as long as I'd known her. But just then a kind of revelation came over me. The sudden cold clarity that it was vanity to imagine that I, as I am, should be enough for her as she is. So I heard myself tell her that I didn't think I could give her what she needed. Now, I have mad at you. Pile on, brother. I deserve it. So, you told Sigrun you could not give her what she needed. You spoke out of cowardice. Aye, obviously. But as prospects for terror go, can you imagine knowing all along you're not enough for someone? and then living out their slow realization of that truth. I admit it chilled me to the bone. You presume to know how she will feel in the future. Why discredit her wishes and yours in the present? I just can't pretend not to know better. She's romanticized the idea of us. Certainly I've done the same. But is that anything to build a future on? I mean, look at me, brother. Be practical. <laughs> If anyone else disparaged you as you disparaged yourself, I would wish to strike them with an axe. Now, back to Sigrun and your low opinion of yourself. Look, brother, I don't apologize for wanting her to have someone who can be everything to her. She deserves the best. Then why should she not deserve the smartest man alive? Sometimes I think you've come too far, brother. Did I overstep? No, no, Kratos. I appreciate your point. And to be fair, if I was so right, then why am I so angry at myself? Sigmund has been important to you for as long as I have known you. What happened in the beginning? Oh, it's a typical enough story. A boy meets girl. Girl fulfills her ambition to transcend the physical plane and become a Valkyrie of Valhalla. One day, Sigrun quietly arrived from Fjordalund and began serving as Freya's handmaiden while she undertook training for the Sisterhood. I don't even think we were introduced. I just see her around the court. Of course, I'd observed her loveliness and impressive stature but long before we fell to talking. But we seemed cut from different cloth, I suppose. Never occurred to me we'd get along as well as we did. You and Sigrun, how was it you first spoke? Back when Freya was queen in Asgard, the better times, I mean, there really began to be some culture around the place. Poets, musicians, the odd contortionist would pay visits, perform, mingle. On one occasion, I'd taken a seat expecting to see this balladeer of the lowlands when Sigrun walked in. Somehow more stunning than I'd ever seen her. And when of all places she chose to sit next to me, well, a lot of very interesting things happened very quickly. But I may need to collect my thoughts while you get us killed again. Let us get back to your memories of Sigrun. She sat beside you. Yes, she chose to sit next to me. No big thing, really. Yet, somehow, despite myself, I felt a rush in my stomach like I was a green lad again. Embarrassing at the end of the day, to be so simple. I made some remark, and I learned how it felt to make her laugh. Suddenly I felt more at ease, almost eerily so. A calm within each other's storms, I suppose. They had a way of describing that. Peace dwells among us. Lovely, brother. That's exactly right. Mamir, you may speak more of coming to Nosigo. Right. Where were we? After the ice was broken, we fell to talking more regularly even making a point to do so. It was all I could do to enjoy our company responsibly, staying mindful of our respective positions and keep from crossing any line that would make things difficult for us to recover from. Hmm, wise. Well, mostly. I'm always wisest in the parts I let myself remember. Romir, what happened next with Sigrun? She had introduced me as a good friend. And though I couldn't be entirely sure what she meant by it, for once I wasn't concerned with an outcome. Regarding Sigrun, I knew my answer was yes. The question itself seemed secondary. You were not upset she called you friend. Show me something for whom friendship means lack of love. 
and I'll show you someone who wonders why their lovers never end up being worth the time. Perhaps. But you did not express your feelings. Oh. I don't think she could have escaped noticing them. I just never asked her anything I felt sure she'd have to refuse. Seagrin, I wanted to tell you. Valhalla keeps sweeping me away to my own adventure in memory. I wondered if it would. That's wonderful. What is it showing you? Some particular events of my wayward youth. But they're in a loop of sorts. Not sure I've quite gleaned what it all amounts to. Then you must do what you do in Valhalla. Keep going. Your relationship with Sigrun. Why so reluctant to tell her how you felt? She was on the Valkyrie's path, preparing to transcend her corporeal form. That was her focus, her chosen purpose, and I didn't want to suggest myself as an obstacle. I suppose I let some part of myself imagine she might recognize my affection, even reciprocate it. But now that we know what she was running from, obviously she'd never again risk choosing love over duty. A unique heartfelt friendship, that is what could endure, and that is what I chose to embrace. Mimir, can you hear me? Has my voice broken through? Sigrun? Yes! Hello! How are you talking to... How long have you been able I to hear? I haven't been listening to you. There's just something I needed to tell you. Valhalla is displeased with me. It wishes a penance of sorts. Trials to reforge my loyalty. I haven't decided what to do, but I hoped we could talk about it. Aye. Let's do. Next time we die, or Kratos gets a headache. Last time. It seems Seeker. you're lurking. What's this about Valhalla questioning your loyalty? I thought everything was all right. It is. For you are alive. And I am no longer in pain. But my transgression was not without consequences. Valhalla has... penalized me. I could not enter now if I wanted to. In fact, I am not sure if it will welcome me in death. What? That can't be right. No one's more worthy of Valhalla than you. You can't have sacrificed that for my sake. It's not fair. There's no blame to place here. When you do what you know is right in your heart, the results are not always what you hope for. That doesn't mean it was the wrong decision. Now, please, we've kept Kratos long enough from his journey. I insist. Go. We'll talk more. Mimir, I've been thinking a lot about the costs and risks of what Valhalla would put me through to affirm my loyalty. It's enough to make me question not my love of this place, but is it really what's most important to me? If I can't answer that, then perhaps I am not... Ready for such a decision. Then you should take all the time you need. Absolutely. If Valhalla isn't what you truly need, then you have a rare opportunity to reassess your priorities. I'm glad you agree. Mamir. I had a thought. What you said to me. But you didn't think you could give me what I needed. I... I've been trying to figure out why you'd say such a thing. I know you don't say things without a reason, even if you don't know what it is at first. But I think I figured it out. It's not that there is anything lacking in you. It's that in the end, nobody can give me everything I need to be happy. Not even Valhalla. That's something I have to give myself. And to do that... You need to find yourself. It's true. And we're saying that's what I meant all along? Well, clever, eh? I'm sure you can see by now. Valhalla has a way of making you learn what you need to learn. Perhaps it does so with me. Even now. Making such demands so as to give me doubts. Long ago... 
I gave myself completely to love. And it destroyed my home and family. Then I threw myself into the service of Valhalla and found a new family in my sisters. But what if that's not where my story ends? It's time I finally found my path. Not because it may or may not be Valhalla's will, or Freya's, or yours, my dear, but my own. Well said, love. I must admit, Sigrun, Valhalla isn't exactly what I imagined. You're experiencing only a very small part of it. One that's independent and unconnected from the rest of Valhalla. Elsewhere, there are larger neighborhoods where the dead reside. Socializing, playing games, drinking, fighting. But one must earn the right to join their fallen comrades. New arrivals run a gauntlet. A personalized, self-contained version of what you're doing. It's meant to help the dead process the lives they lived. Those who are worthy, who have found some measure of closure, are allowed to move forward. Those who are unable to resolve their lives are forever trapped in their personal Valhalla. Some just prefer to keep fighting here. I've come to a decision. At least for the time being, I'm going to step back from the price Valhalla has asked of me. Good for you, Seeker. I think maybe it's time I traveled. Experienced these realms and the lands beyond. Not as Valhalla's emissary, but as a person. That's perfect. You've always dreamed of a grand sea voyage, seeing the world. Perhaps I could go with you. I've been told I'm a useful guide. Perhaps. But let's not distract Kratos further. I'm having a bit of a sinking feeling Seagram doesn't want me traveling with her. You knew that before you asked. Did I, brother? You know the journey she seeks. It is the one you took, and I took. The kind that brings you to the tests you need. The kind you take alone. That's true. I gave in to her weakness. Even now, there's some part of me that just wants to tell her how much I love her and beg her to stay. But that's bloody selfish. I need to do better than that. Where could Sigrun be? I was hoping we'd talk further. Mimir. Sigrun? Uh, about my journey. I need to take some time to understand who I am without wings and helms and missions and without the lovely man with whom the timing has yet to work out. Are you sure we couldn't discuss this face to face? I wasn't sure I could say the words if I had to look at your face. Just promise you'll let me see you off. I won't have you set in sail without my blessing. And not that you need it. Of course. Mumir, you asked of Odin's efforts to conquer Valhalla and the Valkyries with it. But was Valhalla not his creation, along with all of Asgard? Well, he certainly liked people to think so. And Valhalla served his interests, even if he left the Valkyries to do their work. But in fact, Valhalla and the Order of Valkyries are a force more primordial than any he could hope to bend to his own personal loyalty. Still no Seagram. You don't suppose she's avoiding me? No. Brother, the last time Valhalla spirited me away to the forest, there was an interesting twist. As the revels ended, I found myself alone, still carrying the magic love flower, and I came upon a sleeping person. But it wasn't the Queen, or the Foolish Youths. It was Sigrun, as I knew her before. I found myself faced with the proposition that with a few drops, 
I could make her care about nothing in the world so much as me. What did you do? I'm pleased to report that I crushed that flower with my bare hands. I am glad to hear it. Mimir, what you said about love turning you into a better person. I wonder, what if that better person was within you all along? But you could only see it once it was reflected in another. As though love is the feeling of recognizing the potential in our own soul. You mean to say falling in love is really only about ourselves? Not only that, one hopes, but the more we can own the part that is about ourselves, the more we can see others for who they really are, and love them, truly, in whatever form that takes. There are ways to improve yourself beyond just practice and repetition. Tegren, listen. You have choices ahead of you that none but you can make. I'll always be there for you when you need me. And if what you ever need is for me to let you go, then... Damn it. I'd find a way. But whatever comes, I just want you to put yourself first for once. You're so much more than any office, any title, any function. And I can't wait to see who else you may become. I'm so relieved you understand. Now that Kratos has found answers to his questions, I believe my service here is done. Arrangements are being made. Please, continue to seek what more you would seek within. I promise, I won't just disappear. How are you feeling? <laughs> I know Seagram's decision must be difficult. May I ask, deep down, what is it she means to you? So much of everything good in what I am is only due to my wanting to be the person she saw me as. Take her out of the equation, and I wonder if I'd ever have stopped being a scoundrel in service of scoundrels. Love can make us wish to improve. I was changed by what Faye saw in me. But losing her did not put an end to who I had become. Her inspiration remains. Aye. I suppose being the person they turned us into is a way to keep them with us. Honor the impact they had on us. Three of us to attend to the Fallen now. We're shorthanded. But we've begun recruiting new Shield Maidens. Well, I happen to know of one lass who'd jump at the chance to join your ranks. You mean Throod? Sif and Thor's daughter? <laughs> Believe me, I know. She sought us out before the call even left our lips. Mm. She fights well, and can be trusted. A recommendation from you, General. With that, how could we ignore her? Not that she'd let us. <laughs> the mirror. Kratos. My time to depart draws near. The ways of Valhalla are familiar to you both now. You may continue and return as you desire. I'll wait for you on the beach. We'll be there, Sigrun. Are you all right? Aye, brother. I feel a pain in an organ I no longer possess, but the sooner she sets off, the sooner she may return. Thank you, my queen. My sister, Sigrid. Whether Valkyrie, Shield Maiden, or whatever else you should call yourself in time, I shall always be your sister. Do you hear me? I hear you. So this is it then? For now. For however long. Good. I mean, I'll miss you more than I can say, but whatever we ever were, or, or weren't, or might have been if the timing weren't just so... I need you to know that it mattered. All of it. Knowing you helped make me a person I can stand to be. And all I want for you in exchange is... everything. I can't imagine 
a world in which I don't end up very close with you, my love. But let me come back to you whole. Let me come back not needing anyone to tell me what I need to be happy. I can't begrudge you getting to know yourself. After all, it's been one of the great pleasures of my life. Farewell, Sigrun, and good luck. Thank you, Kratos. Farewell, my friends. Fair winds, my love. Shall we occupy our minds? Aye. Not sure I'll feel like talking much more today, but let's focus on the work. <laughs>